One of the new set mechanics in Set 9 are the new portals into different regions. There are 30 portals in total and 11 different regions. Some portals have massive impact on the game, to the point where the meta is completely different on them, while others have smaller impact, but still enough to change up the power structure between comps. Let's take a look at how to play every single portal in the game and how it changes the meta, and then we'll also cover how to use Ryus's spell in every region as that changes as well. Starting off with Bandal City, the first portal is Yordle Portals, which gives you random champions twice per stage. This is great to get some extra gold, but since the champions are random, there is no way to play around this besides selling them off for gold unless we can use them. Yumi's Zoom Zone makes overtime start after 20 seconds instead of 30. In overtime, champions get a lot more AP, AD, and attack speed, which means everybody's DPS is going to be increased greatly. Therefore, overtime is generally bad for melee carries, as they have to spend time walking to the next target. This means that ranged carries can burst down melee carries while they are walking towards them. This portal is also bad for comps that can't handle burst damage, as there will be a lot more of this in this portal. Scuttle Puddle just gives more loot on PvE rounds. This works similarly to the Galaxy Treasure Trove from Set 3. The difference is that you only get more gold on Scuttle Puddle instead of more items and consumables. You also will no longer lose to Krugs or any other PvE rounds, as the Scuttle Crabs don't attack your champions. This makes it a lot easier to open for it in the early game, as you never have to roll to beat Krugs on Stage 2-7. It's also easier to pull off large transitions on Wolves and Raptors, as you can sell off almost your entire team and still beat them. Generally, comps that like to get to level 8 and 9 are favored on this portal, or comps that want to reroll for 3 stars as they reach 50 gold faster. In Bandle Cafeteria, you get a spatula, and champions holding a spatula give their closest ally 20% max HP every single turn. This works similarly to the Mountain Hex from Set 2, shadow to anyone that remembers that. The portal is great for any comps that power spike with the spatula, like Noxus Reroll, where you can make a Noxus emblem on Nasus, or Ionia, where you can make Ionia emblem on Kai'Sa. The last tip is to make sure you're giving the max HP to a champion you will be using late game, as it stacks up to quite a large number if you've been giving 20 HP per turn for the entire game. Rise's spell in Bandal City works just like Thresh's and Cinder's abilities from set 3 and 8, only that this ability also works if you have no champions on your bench, but it's still better to hold units with large CC spells like Jarvan and Scion, as they will have the highest impact. Moving on to the Demacia region, House Light Shield gives you an item that gives percent HP healing or more damage per second depending on if the item is placed on the champion in the front or back rows. You lose the fight once the holder of the item dies, therefore it's almost always best to put it on secondary carries. Putting it on tanks should generally be avoided, although it can work in some cases due to the percent healing. Petricide Forest gives old units more HP. You get more Giant Slayer value here, as more units enter the threshold. And the portal is great for comps with more tanks like Garen Reroll and Ionia Yasuo. Rice's spell in Demacia gives your team more shielding and healing, and a bit of damage as well at the end of a spell. This makes him great to add into comp that runs Targon, as his spell will be even stronger with these comps. Moving on to the Freljord region, Hearth Home lets you turn one of your items into a Radiant one on stage 4 or 5. You put the consumable it gives you on a champion, and then you pick one of the items you want to turn into a Radiant item. This is great for comps with a solo carry, like Garen Reroll, Tristana Reroll, and Freljord Aphilios. You also generally want to transform the core item for the champion, like Rageblade for Garen and Aphilios, and Last Whisper on Tristana. Orn's Forge gives you an Orn item anvil at some point in the game. Orn's items are powerful, and can replace your carry items if you get the right ones. Check out my guide on how to use all the Orn items, it will be linked down in the description. Ryze's spell in Freljord is an AoE attack speed slow, and if enemies get hit by it again, they get stunned. It works similarly to Eternal Winter. This is great to counter melee carries like Yasuo, Garen, and Darius, but it will do little against backline carries, as the spell only has a 2 hex radius. Moving on to the Ionia region, Placidium Library gives you any emblem you want on stage 3-5. This is incredibly powerful for comps that want verticals like Void and Noxus. Two emblems are uncraftable though, and the scroll will not work on them. They are Yordle and Multicaster, so if you use the scroll on Teemo, you will only be offered a strategist emblem. God Willow's Grove makes one champion on the bench add their traits to the active field. This is great for comps that don't have good level 7s or 8s. For example, Zeri struggles to get in 2 Freljord, 4 Zahn, and 4 Gunners, but it's a lot easier here as you get one of the traits from the bench now. Don't star up the champion if you can, as it will just be a waste of gold. And champions typically thought of as synergy bots go here, like Samira and Cassiopeia in Noxus, and Tristana and Gunner Zeri. The Dreaming Pool gives you a champion that fits your team at the start of each stage. This is not random, the way the game figures out what to give you is that it takes the top active trait and gives you a cost equivalent to the stage. So in this example, once stage 3-1 starts, 
the game will give me a Demacia Champion, as that trait is at the top of the list. Since it's stage 3, it will give a 3 cost, and there are two 3 cost Demacians with Sona and Garen, so it will give either one of those two. If there wasn't a 3 cost Demacian, it would instead give a 3 cost Bastion, and so on. Rise's spell in Ionia stuns the entire enemy team, and also gives your closest allies healing and attack speed. This is overall just a great spell, but it's even better in Invoker comps, where Rise will cast more often, as the spell costs a total of 150 mana to recast. Moving on to the Noxus region, Immortal Bastion works just like Jade from set 7. The flag gives you attack speed and a shield based on your HP. Comps that deal splash damage are better here, as more people will be clumped up. Comps with multiple carries also perform better, since the buffs are impacting a larger number of important champions. Don't be afraid to not use this flag if it makes your positioning worse, or at least only have it next to a couple of units, as opposed to having an extra 5 or 6 units. Nox Kraya makes hexes appear that give one free item to a champion in the hex, and another hex appears every time an augment is picked, which adds up to a total of three. Don't focus too much on getting free value from these extra hexes if it makes your positioning awkward, as an item or two extra will not be worth it if you keep losing fights due to positioning. Put secondary carries and tanks in these hexes during the late game, as you should have made three items for your main tank and carry at this point. Putting a unit with Zephyr on these hexes is also great, as you will hit a lot of impactful champions and you will often get continuous good value from it on the Hex. If a lot of Hexes are on the same side, make a Shroud to get consistent Mana Reeve on the enemy team as well. Rise's spell in Noxus gives your team more items and stacking damage. He also throws out random Axes that deal damage to the enemy team. This is great for comps that have multiple units that can deal damage, for example in Deadeye Aphelios or in Noxus Reroll. Moving on to Piltover, Stillwater Hold completely changes the game. Here no augments will be offered. This makes comps that are not reliant on augments a lot stronger, like Void Kaisa and Nox's reroll. It also makes comps that are reliant on augments terrible or unplayable, like Garen reroll. There are also less ways to come back here, as there are generally less tempo swings, which means you need to try to play more aggressively than usual to try to get ahead and then stay ahead of the lobby. The university makes the first augment prismatic. Looking at the augment distribution, the options are as if the first augment was naturally picked meaning that these are the viable options for the second and third augments. In Jace's workshop, all augments are prismatic. This provides high variance, as the gap between getting good and bad prismatic augments is huge. This means you should reroll to try to chase the best ones, especially if you are behind, but at least leave a decent augment as an option so you don't get completely screwed over. This portal is good to pick if you are against a ton of higher ranked players, as the high variance might be on your side, resulting in an easier game than normally. Rice's spell in Piltover spawns a person with 2 hex range where the enemy champions cannot escape. It lasts for a couple of seconds, then deals damage to everyone inside at the end. This is more so a counter spell, since it does nothing against range carries. So only use Rise here if you need to counter melee carries, as they won't be able to reach your carry if they get trapped in the prison. Moving on to Shadow Isles, Yorick's Graveyard lets you pick one of four items from every eliminated player right after they die. If you are healthy coming into the late game, play comps that can use multiple carries like Zeri with Ergot and Zeri, or Shirima with Azir, Nasus, and Aatrox. You pick from four random items, so don't count on getting something useful every time. Thresh's Sanctum gives you a soul whenever any champion dies on the board. Once you're at 40 souls, you get some loot. Here is the full loot table, and as you can see, the rewards are impactful at most parts of the game, but it's especially impactful in the early game when gold is scarce. Therefore, it's better to have a decently strong comp in the early game so that you kill as many of the enemy units as possible even when you lose. Rise's spell in the Shadow Isles resurrects your units and makes them come back with less HP. This spell works very similarly to the Bandle City spell. There is no great use case for this, it's just overall a good spell. Moving on to the Shireem region, Warlord's Palace replaces Raptor's PvE round with a standard Treasure Dragon from set 7. You still get interest gold and base income between stage 4-7 and 5-1, so wait until 5-1 before you roll, unless you are doing a large transition. Also start saving gold on stage 4-5 to make sure you get good loot on stage 4-7. Shereem and Bazaar makes the stage 2, 3, and 4 carousels have two components on all champions instead of just one. This is great for Pandora's items, so always vote for this portal if you have TF as your legend. When picking which champion you want to take on this carousel, think about what you will use the second component for. Don't exclusively go for one component and think that the other component doesn't really matter, so planning ahead here is way more important. Shifting Sands gives you a magnetic remover at the start of each turn if you don't currently have one. Therefore, slamming items and components here is no problem as you can always remove them later if needed. Rise's spell in Shirema is a mix of Janas and Urgot's spell from set 8. 
He casts a Tornado that CCs enemies and has a chance to drop loot. It's a great spell, but it's too expensive to be useful in any other comps besides Invokers. Moving on to the Targon region, Targon Prime gives you a loot orb once you reach 40 HP or lower, and what it gives is random, so pay attention to what people get from the orb by scouting them once they drop below 40 HP. It has a set amount of things you can give you, but I wasn't able to find the loot table. But this mechanic is a copy-paste from the Radiant Blessing from set 5.5, and the loot table for that looked like this. And I would assume that the loot table from the Targon Prime orb looks very similar. A strategy with this portal is to Lost Streak from the early game, and once you get the orb, all in and roll for your team and turn it into win streak. This way you get an even larger power spike, as you get all the regular power from spending your gold, while also getting the power from the loot orb on top of all of that. Myris Omegnum gives you a Tactician's Crown on stage 2-5 and 4-5. This punishes Lost Streakers a lot harder, as you will take more damage in the early and mid game. If you are Lost Streaking, you have to roll on stage 3-2 to stabilize more often than not, and comps that are flexible and want to fit in more units are also stronger here, like Freljord Ophelios, where you can go vertical and Deadeye, add in more Freljords, or add in more Frontline. And it's a lot worse for linear comps like Garen, where you don't have great extra units to add in at later levels. The Summit gives you a lesser or normal champion duplicator at the start of each stage, starting at stage 3. This is the land of 3 stars, and this is stronger on reroll comps that only want one 3 star champion, like Garen reroll and Rek'Sai reroll. It's also not a bad portal for comps that want multiple 3 stars, like Noxus reroll. You generally want to chase 3 star forecasts in order to win the game when you are playing normal forecast carry comps, as you will usually get 2 normal duplicators by stage 6. Another option is to roll down on stage 4-1 and 2 star your forecast by using the duplicator on them. This way you save a lot of gold and are able to go level 8 a lot faster. Rice's spell in Targon knocks up units and sends them to the largest clump of enemies. If it's the only unit left, it gets killed. This is great to counter unkillable units like 3 stars or super tanks. Moving on to the Void region, Unstable Rift gives you a random item each turn that's only usable for that turn. Generally, always put this item on the main tank or carry for the stats in the early and mid game. Put it on a secondary carry or tank in the late game. The item you get is pure random and different for every person, so don't count on this item being useful. The Lavender Sea makes a Hex appear, which gives either 20% damage reduction or increased damage based on where it appears. Sephir is once again great to place on this Hex, and Shrouding the Enemy Hex is also great to make sure you get some value. 20% is significant, but it's only the value of 2 Juggernaut, so don't screw up positioning to use it. If you can put the main carry or tank in there, great. If not, place the secondary carry or tank there instead. The Rupture takes you to any of the other regions in the game, so pick this one if the two other portals being offered suck. Rice's spell will be randomly picked as one of the other 10 spells, but it will correspond to the region you enter, so it's easy to know which one it is at the start of the game. Moving on to the Zon region, the Sump removes interest gold and instead gives you 3 extra gold every single turn, meaning you always get 8 gold every single turn in total, 5 from base income and 3 from the portal. The two other ways of getting gold is the one gold you get from winning the round, and the rest from streaking. A very simple strategy is to put money into XP every single turn after you've bought units from the shop, do this until you are level 7, then reroll until you have 2 star forecasts, then press level again every turn until you are level 8. And here, reroll comps tend to be a bit worse, as the slow roll strategy doesn't work as well due to the lack of interest gold, and comps with a higher cap also tend to do worse as it's harder to hit level 8 and 9. The best comps are the ones that use mostly 2, 3 and 4 cost champions in their final composition like Sorcerers and Zaun. Ecliptic Volt gives you gold every time you pick an augment. This is generally good for reroll comps and fast 8 comps as it's a lot easier to hit 50 gold and the later levels faster. Glass Industries gives you 3 gold every time you build an item. This is great in the early game to hit interest thresholds faster, so slam more items than you normally would. The extra gold will give you a lot more power late game, as your team will be a lot stronger. If you are lost streaking, you can still make items and leave them on the bench. And if you don't make any items, the major benefit of lost streaking goes away, as you won't even have more gold than everyone else anymore. Bryce's spell in Zaun shreds resistances and applies grievous wounds to a set amount of enemy champions based on star level. This spell is overall great utility, but it's likely not a replacement for Last Whisper, Sunfire, Morello, Spark, or Static Shiv, unless you have mana items on Bryce. It's more so a unit you play if you haven't built any of those items, and now you need some shred or grievous wounds in your team. This spell also scales with gold, but most of the time you will be at zero gold in the late game unless you are high rolling like crazy. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for you to members and patrons, and the links to join those are down in the description. 
And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.